Hello. I wanted to share a few things with you. So we talked about tapering curving gradations last time, Anthony Ryder thing, which would be like a gradation this way, and it could be curving like uh, curves this way, and it tapers, right? It tapers, so a gradation that is curving and tapering. Anthony Ryder, we saw how he builds washes and everything this way shading. However, a problem with this is, this is Bridgman, by the way, uh, problem with this is one tends to focus too much on gradation part of it, right? So darkening it towards one side or darkening it towards this side, that is not necessary in mark making. So in Digital art, we think about brush size, controlling brush size, right? So this would be a small mark, this would be a large mark, and uh, this would be a larger mark, right? So sharp, soft, softer, which is the brush getting bigger. <clears throat> and if we just control the brush size, uh, it, it basically lets you establish everything faster. But there is no opacity needed in this so that if you're trying to render something like this, this one, right? This cheekbone. Uh, you need not grade it, it this way. What I'm talking about is control the brush size. So make the marks with constant opacity. Forget the TCG for now because this is a better method. Uh, it is a simple you know it's, it's it's a more efficient method which has more control right so i'm not able to see my okay so i'm looking through my phone screen now uh, right uh, constant opacity so like this size brush done uh, then you know like this small size and then this is sharp over here so then small size and then you just with constant opacity you just keep putting in marks, but you just build up on top of that with that same opacity. You never vary the opacity. That is a nice way of... So then this is a wash over here, vertical wash. So uh, what would you call it in terms of edge quality? I would say I can see an outline over here. Over here, this outline. Uh, so you would mark it with an outline or at least hover over it. Just in your mind, establish it. So now this edge has been established. So once that this edge is established, we can just fill it up with a large brush, which is like constant uh, opacity that way, right? Uh, try this, we, uh, you know, think about it. If you made a mark this way, tapering, curving, gradation, right? Uh, a gradation, tapering, curving, gradation. Uh, this is this exact pattern and uh, you know, it creates these frayed edges over here, which could be a nice effect if you want. But if you're blowing up something creative, creating something really resolved, like something over here, like Andrew Loomis, big, big thing, and you're doing this with a pencil, how much are you going to establish with the tapering curving gradation? Like, this is not a tapering curving gradation. So how would you resolve that? Because this is a problem. When you start to render bigger, this becomes a big problem. So what you do is do the constant opacity thing, and instead of doing a zigzag, uh, use something like Bernard Romain Julian would use, which is just light strokes hatching, uh, you could say, right? So do it this way. So which one is better, right? I put a little bit of gradation in it, which was not necessary. Let, let's do it this way, right? Which one has more control in shape? This one. And I'm going to talk about shape design because shape is very important in these values because if you're trying to represent something like this the edges form shapes right these are shapes formed by edges this ha this is shape extraction so to represent something like this you need to represent these shapes and this, these shapes, something as clear as this, would not be possible with the tapering curving gradation because you're doing a zigzag. You need more control over that. So if you approach it with this method, uh, right, the same shape, but uh, this way, right, you have control over these, and then you can layer it up with the same opacity. 
So you get more resolution too if you want. If you want less resolution, you already have TCG then, right? Uh, th that's the whole point of it. Uh, for more precision, more control, and uh, more accurate representation, m more accurate shapes, right? So try this constant opacity, right? Keep the opacity constant, make shapes. Keep the opacity constant, make shapes. And think about it in brush size and edge quality, right? So small size, big size, bigger size. And uh, let's say we wanted to make it this darker, bigger size, darker. Again, layer it up, uh, layer it up, layer it up. So we're keeping the opacity constant, right? And this, this all has to do with edges. So shape and edges. Vanderpool is a gangster at edges and shapes. <clears throat> when one would think that he has a lot to do with values, but I think of him uh, more as a shape designer. Look at these. Uh, this is shape and edges. Not so much value. This is just values compressed. This is uh, there's nothing uh, significant in value over here. Look at this beautiful shape, and look at the edges he's created, and inside the value too. Look at the qu quality of the edges, right? So you control the edges by controlling the brush size. Look at these shapes. This is not much to do with value. This is, has to do with sh beautiful shape design. Look at that. Look at this shape. Look at this, my favorite. This is, look at this beautiful shape. Like who puts a show, like a t-shirt sleeve on the shoulder of some person? This is not, this, he is designing this shape. He is designing this shape of this compression, value compression. He is expressing himself. So, and edges too, uh, you know, edges convey the nature of the value. And what do you see over here? I see an eagle in this, in this shape, in this shape, outline of this figure. Yeah, it's a beautiful figure with beautiful breasts and a belly button, but this looks like an eagle, right? Uh, there's this mythological character in Age of Mythology where the Egyptian character in mythological has like a head of an e eagle or an owl, one of those, and this is like the beak of that eagle, and this is the body of it. This is something subconscious. This is expression-related more than representation art-related, right? Look at this. Who does this? This is shape design. You could see that totally in that arm. He's just literally just blocked it in. He's designed that shape, right? The, he's outlining that shape either literally or in his head and he's just filling it in. So this has nothing to do with value. It has to do with shape and edges. Look at this, all about edges, all about edges. And there is a counterintuitive approach to this where you would make something soft, where soft means feminine and blocky and hard and dark means masculine. Loomis said this in his portrait book in the female faces chapter. Uh, right, so if 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 the breast of a woman would be a feminine part, Vanderpool cho is choosing to make it hard and blocky, which uh, Loomis does too, and he suggested that. Uh, right, cheek of a woman would be is supposed to be soft and feminine. He's made it blocky, hard edge, dark edge, hard edge, and. Loomis talks about this too. Woman chapter, he talks about how women have softer cheeks than men, but it is better to represent their cheek with uh, 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 with bony, a, a bony approach, which is a masculine uh, element. Look at this, dark, dark, hard, blocky. So he's suggesting that even though women have softer cheeks, do represent their uh, them in a counterintuitive way, make it masculine. Look at this cheek. 
these don't have any value in them. But look at this blocky cheek represented. And then he talks about masculine and feminine qualities in the hair too, where you can make the hair blocky, which is like uh, a masculine quality, but then make this round, the jaw is round. So there are combinations of these, like uh, one person may have a, a feminine nose, masculine eyes, uh, masculine eyebrows, a feminine mouth. Uh, so round jaw, feminine, uh, curvy round neck, feminine, blocky hair, which obviously the woman didn't have hair like this. He made it this way because he wanted to convey a sense of power and masculinity in her, right? Uh, there are combinations of this. And how, you, how do you decide uh, how I want to design this person? You, f you don't decide, uh, like you don't create that person. You look in the reference and you feel how you feel about that person. You know, I feel a masculine quality in this, so I'm choosing to make it this way. If you go to design it, uh, it's 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 not about designing. It's not about creating a person. It's about interpreting what you're seeing and how you're feeling about it. Right? Look at this jaw, uh, cheek, bony, masculine. My favorite. Look at this cheek, and this is round, feminine, 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 uh, feminine mouth, quite feminine nose quite masculine eyes because dark dark blocky straight dark direct white direct black that's blocky masculine eyebrows straight blocky little bit of a softness over here so a little bit of a, like a feminine touch to it masculine hair blocky clearly blocky so the hair is making her so masculine but her mouth her nose most of her features are so feminine look at this she's so masculine so what's feminine about it? The nose is masculine. The eyebrows are masculine. Most of the features are masculine. That's why she's feeling so. Uh, hair, blocky masculine. right? Dark eyebrows, linear eyebrows. Straight neck, masculine too. Jaws, masculine. Jaw, masculine. Just the mouth is feminine. This very feminine mouth. How? Because the softness of this highlight he, Loomis does this a lot. Uh, if you have like uh, a thing where you have a dark patch, right? Let's say it's a shoulder and uh, it's supposed to have some value. You could choose to uh, indicate the highlight in a blocky way. Right? Uh, that would be like within the dark, the highlight that you're fi finding is blocky all of a sudden. But if the same highlight would be something on a lip, uh, which would be like this, let's say, and if you make that highlight soft, then it takes on a feminine quality to that form. Right? This happens often with lips, and this happens often with... Uh, Loomis hair. Look at this. He's found a blocky highlight in there, which is making the hair masculine. Over here too, over here too, here too. Uh, this lip is quite soft. Uh, this is lip highlight is quite soft. This highlight quite soft. Quite soft. Quite soft. Blocky, hard, highlight, right? Masculine and feminine. So something is masculine if it is straight edged, dark, angular, and blocky, which means square. Something is feminine if it is round, uh, which means softly rendered, or light, light marks like this, light mark. This is feminine. So round, soft, right? Curvy, round, soft, graceful. Curvy, not angular, light. So what we saw in Van der Poel was he is using counterintuitive means to represent what is feminine. Uh, so in a man, this is a, right? Uh, 
a, a man's butt is supposed to be masculine, but he is rendered it softly and made it feminine, right? Um, a man's uh, uh, teres major scapular muscles, uh, the muscles are supposed to be, right? Scapular muscles are supposed to be very hard and bony and very masculine. Look at how softly he's represented it. He's purposely making it counterintuitive. I, you know, these choices... Look at this man's bicep. How softly is rendered it? How soft is this? This is masculine, and so his right uh, compared to that, this he is deliberately made masculine. Uh, but why? The form is supposed to be spherical and round, but it's purposely made masculine, angular and blocky. Now look at this, breast, supposed to be round, but uh, the pectoral is how hard and blocky it is. How, how dark the values are, over here, how blocky this is. And then a shoulder, feminine shoulder, which is supposed to be round and soft, he's made it blocky and hard. A feminine breast, which is supposed to be round and soft, he's, making, he's made it blocky and hard. A feminine cheek was supposed to be round and soft, made it dark and blocky and hard. Right? Look at this. But, blocky and hard, feminine, made it masculine. So here too, this is, uh, he's controlling the edges of the areola. Completely lost over here. Found just a little bit of an edge over here, over here. Just a little bit of an edge over here. And then suddenly lost everywhere else. You can see just a little bit of an edge over here. This is not values, this is edge quality. He's, you could put any value you want almost. But if you control the edges, look at this, look at this edge. Nothing, no edge over here in the whiteness. A little bit of an edge over here. So you can play with abstractions that way uh, and express yourself. Right? Pectoralis female breast, blocky as square as it could be, it's square like a brick. Pectoralis soft soft shoulder which is supposed to be feminine and made in masculine blocky all of this edges blocky masculine edges but this is soft the nipple is soft like that and so where does the feminine quality come from it comes from the outline the graceful curves which he does this is specific uh, the quite quintessential of Vanderpool. When he wants to convey something feminine, he would do like a very graceful outline of it. But the edges, he will go gangster with it. Right? So this is shape design, shape extraction. This shape, 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 shape all the way through. Shape all the way through. And then once the shape is established, you just the edges. So I did a study for shape extraction, trying to study shapes. Uh, these are leaves. Uh, I studied clouds. Clouds have beautiful shapes. You can observe clouds. And so what I found is when you make shapes like these, right? Uh, shape, shape, shape. Finding the shapes. Uh, not the values, but the shapes and the edges. Edge means if you have something like this sharp edge, something like this bigger brush, softer edge, a bigger brush, even softer edge. So, so this is with a pen and I tried to, like so lightness means softer edge, razor sharp darkness means hard edge. Like soft edge, this way. But this doesn't convey the, uh, the shape very well. This is just like outline. But when you fill in the shape with value, 
suddenly it takes a solidity of form, the, the shape, which is what Vanderpool is doing. Uh, and then he, he, he could just soften that edge with something, and uh, right? So then, then all of a sudden, the shape exists, but the edge has been softened. So it's, it's thinking in shapes and uh, edges. So these are leaves. Uh, so what I did was I was finding shapes within value. So within a shape of shadow, when you observe another shape, try to find it deliberately, outline it and draw it. Now, what this does is it, it incites a certain subconscious feeling. Uh, this is something that you are seeing specifically in that shadow shape uh, because your brain is associating, you have your own unique memories and you choose to see that when uh, one would, uh, you know, within a pattern of like whiteness, what do you see in here? I see this, this, I see this. So then what is this if I ask myself? It, it is like a, an arm, a mother's arm reaching over. This is the thumb. This is her, no, you know, graceful hand this way, right? So this is something subconscious we are seeing in, this could be anything. Finding shapes and then expressing myself through them. And so this is nothing in particular, but if we fill this in with value, we fill this in value which is not really value this is just like just filling it in with flat thing so now it's something it's it's a shape that it's more solid and if we if we I don't want to shade this arm so what I'll do is I'll just outline the 